and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I have nothing to really report for my week, so I'm just going to jump into the book wrap up. So the first book I finished was my reread of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and I rerated it on Call Pile and it still comes out to a five. This one was so much fun to reread because every time I pick up different nuances of items from history or from the relationships that Lizzie or other characters have with one another. And I just really like seeing the development of even the relationship between Lizzie and Mr. Darcy. <laughs> Blink down his name for a moment. I think this is a pretty well-known book, so I'm not going to go too much more into the plot. The next book I finished was Slaying the Dragon. Finally! Yay! I really loved this book. To be fair, I haven't read any other books about Dungeons and & Dragons, and as I have never played myself, this was completely new to me, and I knew I was jumping into a world of things that I wouldn't know. I have put a written review on Goodreads and Storygraph, if you're curious to see that. So this book is part memoir, part history, and it's a memoir as it, the author Ben Riggs talks about his own gaming experience with Dungeons and Dragons. And it was important for him as a teenager because it connected him to other people that were like him and solidified him in a gaming culture. And it's also a history book because he has gone out and he has done his research and he's interviewed people who have worked for or with the original company TSR. If you're going to read this, you're going to get some of the Dungeons and Dragons history, but it's really more of a history of the company and how things are going there. So you're not going to get any nitty gritty details on why certain gaming mechanics were chosen. That's not what this is. This is about the company, how it was formed, the relationships it had with its staff and other community members up into the point where it was sold by Wizards of the Coast and they did research to find out why it had started losing money at the end. And this is really a how-to manual for not to treat employees and staff and how to not run a business. I have been with companies that treat people as like they are replaceable and that they need to give all of their time and attention to the company. And yet you can still see people shine in a company like that because they're there for what is being done, not who the company is run by. So really, really good writing. I especially like that Riggs doesn't allow anyone to be vilified. It's sure in his interviews with people, like the people interviewing will be like, mm, I didn't like this person because of this, this, and this reason. But he's always tried to then show a different perspective of someone else who has worked with them where they were like, oh no, I got along with them just fine. I like this about them. Just kind of showing that when you, just kind of showing that with our human nature, we don't always like the same people. We don't always work well with the same people. And it's a very balanced narrative that way. And I, I loved it. It's also, as I've said before, in many of my, I'm reading this portions, it's very personable. It's easy to read. It's not very long. And it's just one of those things that when you sit down to read it, you're going to keep being sucked into doing it. I think the hardest thing for me was in the periods that I put it down, I didn't always think about picking it back up. So while it's really easy to read once you're in it, it's not something that for me was going, oh, I want to learn more. Again, that's me personally. Otherwise, like I said, I really loved this book and it's given me a whole new perspective on business and professionalism. And now I had set a TBR for last week and that went by the wayside because the book of the year that I've been waiting for finally came in. So instead I picked up Station Eternity by Mer Lafferty. And this is a science fiction mystery centered around a woman who all her life murders happen around her. She's never been the person to commit the murder, but she keeps being a suspect because she's there every time. At the beginning of this book, she has taken asylum on a sentient space station called Eternity, hence the name, and just found out that 
Eternity is going to allow more humans on board. And she's freaking out. And it goes from there. So I am a little over halfway through this book and definitely plan to finish it this week. I just really enjoy Lafferty's writing. She does a lot more with flashbacks when she introduces characters, which I thought was an interesting way to handle this murder mystery, but it's working for me, so I have no complaints. And then for a continuing TBR, I still want to get to Fox Hunt and bring me a unicorn. Still on my TBR. I probably will pick up the nonfiction uh, because it's a little bit easier to read during quiet moments at work. And then once Station Eternity's done, I'll focus more on Fox Hunt. So that has been my reading wrap up. And for my writing wrap up, I have not written anything this week. I had a little more depression episodes, and so I've been sleeping in as long as I can. It happens. I'm trying to take care of myself mentally and physically so then in November I can hit the ground running. I've taken off the first day of November. I, I always do. I always take off the first day of November and the last day of November so that I can get a good start on my words on that first day. And then on the last I can write like mad to get my word count. When things are flowing, when everything's working with the story and I I have absolutely no clue what I'm writing in November. I will find that out on the first, which characters decide to start talking to me. And since I film on Saturdays, today is the write-a-thon. Hopefully it went well. I'm really excited to talk to my co-hosts. I think that's all my writing news so far. And then for other media, my husband and I finished the first season of She-Hulk on Disney+. Plus. We both love the show. We're actually laughing at all of the reviews that are negative because they clearly have not gotten the message of the show, or at least the ones that we've watched. They, yeah, they missed that it's a sense of humor and it's a very feminist retelling. And all of that was foreshadowed in the very first episode when she got her powers and was talking to Bruce and he's like, here, you have to control your anger and all of this. And she's like, huh, yeah, I'm a woman. We do that daily. And that set everything up like, oh, oh. And it's really that feminist theme that goes through everything. You're seeing life from a woman that is realistic and relatable. Because it doesn't matter how qualified she is for her lawyer job. Everybody's pissed that she, ha she got superpowers because she got her cousin's blood on her. And I really liked even how the season ended because again it went back to no 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 this is she hulk's story she hulk is the one who gets to solve everything and that's all i'm going to say if you haven't already seen it if you have seen it i'm curious what your thoughts are like i said a lot of the reviews my husband and i have seen and left at have just been more where they missed the tone and quality but there are a couple who are just kind of female hating as well so for us we're just like oh yeah this show's obviously not for you but I don't mind if there's actual criticisms of the show because I don't think it was perfect I just really enjoyed it I think that's all the media that I've seen been a really fast week but I'm okay with that have you guys watched any good sci-fi movies or tv shows that have come out in 2022 I'm a little behind and would like to catch up on things. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.